Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. We're going to follow on with our fundamentals talking about how to create a database using T-SQL. Now, if these things are useful to you, please subscribe, make some comments, hit the like button. I need to know that this is useful to people, so I will continue to do these and add to them. I can add to them much faster if I know that they are useful. So please, please, please let me know how these things are going for you, and then I will continue to produce more and more. So we're talking T-SQL uh, methods to create a database today. Now, fundamentally, can you use the GUI to do all this work? You can. And I do show, in the previous video, I show how to use the GUI. And in upcoming videos, I will also show how to use the GUI to get things done. But fundamentally, you need to start thinking about the idea that most of your control should be through T-SQL. Most of your control should be using T-SQL because code is a way to automate better and further on how to create databases. You're going to hear me say this a lot throughout the, the sessions because it's so fundamental to learning how code works. But... We're going to use two methods to do the database creation. Uh, the first method we're going to use is this very simple, very straightforward approach using the defaults to create a database using T-SQL. Then I'm going to show you a much more controlled, uh, focused method of defining exactly where everything goes to create a database using T-SQL. Now remember again, these are fundamentals. This is very much a beginner's level system. If you already know everything, you don't need to watch this video. So let's go take a look at the code and see how it works. All right, so we want to create a database using T-SQL. To use T-SQL, the first thing we've got to start with is create a new query. So we've got a query window open now, and we're going to type in the correct command. The basic command is very straightforward. It is create database. We're creating a database. It's just that's all the name of it. That's all we have to do. Create database. Now this is using the defaults to create this database. I will show you where those defaults are and how you can manipulate them if you choose to, but fundamentally we can take those defaults, use them to create a database. So create database, my new database. That's all we have to do and then we can hit execute and it will create a new database for us. Now we could do that from just about anywhere within the system as long as you've got access. If we come back over to here, right click, hit refresh, you will see that my new database has been created. So we can manipulate database creation very directly, very easily through T-SQL, taking advantage of the defaults. Now going back to T-SQL for a second, what if I want to get rid of my new database? What if I don't want it anymore? Well, simple drop database, my new database. Now you need, do need to make sure that you are not in that database. So this T-SQL window is using the master database right now. So that's okay. If I was connected up or anyone else was connected up to that database, I would not be able to drop it. But right now, no one else, this is a test system. I'm the only one on it. I know how everything is being manipulated. Nothing else is connected to the My New Database except me, um, and I'm not connected to it. So I can now execute this query, and ta-da, away it goes. I've now dropped my database. If we go back over to here and hit Refresh, you will then see that the My New Database is gone. Now, where did those defaults come from? Let's go to our server, and let's take a look at the properties of the server itself. And if you look down here, we have database settings. So let's click on database settings, and in the database we have a number of different settings, a number of different ways of manipulating the database, lots and lots of stuff that we will get to way further down the road because we're trying to start off with just the fundamentals, just enough to get the job done. So what we're focusing here now, right now, is the database default locations. Now I've set mine up. Yes, everything is using the C drive. This is a very small test system in a production environment. I would want more than one drive, um, presumably different locations for storing this stuff. But now I can say that I want my data in one place. I want my backups in another. And all these things are manipulated directly on the server itself so that anytime I connect up from any location, 
these settings are always going to be the same. There's an ellipsis over here you can click on and it will allow you to do a file search across the various drives. Um, you can use, you know, um, slash slash Windows type locations if you want to. There's all kinds of manipulation and stuff you can do. I just want you to show, show you where you control that from. But that's not the only way to create a database. Let's go back over to our T-SQL. If we want to, we can take more direct control. So if we type create database, give it a name. You want to have meaningful names normally, but for test purposes, we're just going to call it another database. So we can say create database, and then we can start to get specific and say on primary. Now this defines our primary location. So then we give it a name. We have to use in to define the string because these are Unicode characters so they can support multiple different types of sets. Um, I will provide you with a link to the full create database command on the Microsoft website so you can get every bit of information from it. But we're just going to walk through some more basics. So we call this, you know, another database. And we're going to define that's the logical name of the file, and now we have to define the physical name of the file and the location. Again, we have to use the N command. You can, it is much better to use the capital N. It makes it um, easier to read, and as you can tell, the um, prompts are changing because it recognizes what I'm doing. So now we've got an open quote. We're going to go C colon backslash data backslash another database dot mdf. Now you could name this file anything you want to. It does not have to be you know the standard which is usually the first file is mdf and second file is ndf, 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 second, third, fourth, fifth. You can name this dot doc if you chose. Don't do that. It, it makes things extremely unclear and a big, big part of anything that we do has to be about clarity. So please stick to a very clear standard. The default is data files are, the first one is MDF, subsequent ones are L M NDF, N as in Nancy, and log files are LDF. And you'll see that here in just a second. So we have to add a comma. Size, we pick a size. We can pick it anything we want. Um, just for our purposes, we're going to make it a small database. I'm going to go with 4 gigabytes. File growth, we can define that and control that. We're going to say that it is 1 gigabyte at a time, at least for now. And a max size, which again, something else we can control, of 10 gigabytes. So this thing can grow up to 10 gigabytes, this one file. We are going to put a log. And we have to define its name, and it will be another database log. Oh, and look at that. There's a typo. Let's fix that real quick. Close that. You have to define the file name. And you'll notice LDF is what I'm choosing here to ensure that I'm separating out my MDF from my LDF files, my data from my log, just for clarity so we all know what they are. Yes, you can use any extension you want to, but please, clarity is so important here. So size equals, we're just going to go with one gigabyte for the log, file growth. Now, discussing file growth, things get really weird really quickly. I can make it, you know, say 500 megabytes, or I could make it, say, 10%. Um, I've got a whole bunch of options here on how I can define this. I'm going to go with 10% for now just as a, as a method of showing you that there's more than one way to get it done. But that's the basics. So we're creating a database, defining the database, and we define where the primary is, where the log file is, and the basic file structures are all defined. With that done, we run the command, 
it will execute the query and what the query is going to result in is when it completes successfully let's go back over to here again refresh and in fact we've got my uh, um, where is it another database there it is another database created using the tsql command um, you can put the entire script in one line let's go back to the script for a second you can put this entire script in a single line but white space is your friend it makes things more readable um, I break down into chunks you know defining the primary defining the log um, and then I even break down the chunks into chunks the name and the file name in one space and the size file growth and max size in another and you can control each of these independently and Basically, what this is doing is it's doing the same thing as this command did. It's just instead of using the default values, I am going in and creating specific values that I want to control. It's a way to get more directly defining, more directly telling things what they are. Now, these logical names, you, again, you can do anything you want with them. And the physical names, you can do anything you want with them as long as it's clear and as long as you're not trying to say create exactly the same file, another database.mdf and another database.mdf in the same location. You could not do that. But other than that, you've got a lot of control. Now, I have not exercised every possible option on the create database here. And if you go and look at the um, actual code um, defined by the documentation, you can see that there are a whole bunch of other ways to manipulate this. So this is just the fundamentals, getting us to the database size, getting us to a max size, defining a file growth, whether it's one gigabyte jumps or a 10% jump. Um, there's a whole discussion around how to best to define file growth, um, but it goes way beyond the basics. We're not going to be able to cover it right now. I just want to show you how to manipulate creating a database using T-SQL, and this is the basic command. Now, don't go away a couple of more points. Please subscribe. Please hit the like button. Please let me know that I need to follow up and make more of these. I need to understand if this is working for you or not. So make sure you get that done. Subscribe, like, comment. Thank you. So before we go, just remember the important thing here is, is that when you really get into the high end on database management, there's so much more to this than immediately meets the eye with what we just finished. And you need to really take into account disks, disk placement, and the way that you manage and manipulate those things. It is fundamental, a good idea, to separate data management and data storage from your operating system. So while on a demo machine, I might only have a C drive, you should have more than one drive on a real production server. You should be able to separate absolutely separate storage and manipulation of data from logs, from TempDB, from, from the OS. These things should be fundamentally pulled apart. Yes, there's a whole bunch more to this if we start talking about SANS and all the rest of those things, but you know, we just need to keep the idea in mind that dumping everything into one location makes it actually much harder to manage, much harder to control, much harder to expand upon. So Separate out storage from the start. Think about that as you begin your path through creating databases and controlling them. Thanks a lot. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.